This is our 25th physics lesson on simple machines. And so we're going to look at what a simple machine is. We're going to look at input and output force um, and uh, a bunch of different equations regarding simple machines, how to calculate mechanical advantage that includes an ideal and actual. And then we'll look at efficiency and, and determining how much heat's lost based on efficiency. So the three types of simple machines we're going to uh, focus on, lever, it's going to just be a bar that turns around a pivot point or also called a fulcrum that can be used to lift an object. Pulley is just going to be like a rope or a strand that's around a circular thing that allows the, the rope or strand to rotate. Um, an incline plane is going to be a slope surface where you can use it to push an object up the slope surface and the end result is you're, you're lifting the object off the ground so far. Some of the variables we've seen before, nothing really new except for this ideal of mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage. They're not going to have a unit. We'll talk about those later on. But you have work in joules, we have force in newtons, and we have distance in meters like we have before. We use simple machines to, first of all, if we want to make it easier to to, to lift something, we can multiply our force. This guy has to apply less force than the weight of this refrigerator to lift it up. But notice, it's, he's not lifting it up very much. So he's multiplying his force in, and he's getting more force out as a result through using this simple machine. We could also do the opposite. See how little of a distance he's pushing here, and look at how much of a distance he's lifting up this, this fridge. Well, he's going to have to apply a whole lot more force here, um, but he's going to get a lot of distance as a result. This is something you probably wouldn't do for a fridge. I don't think this guy really would be able to lift that fridge if he was trying to do this. And then you can also change the direction. Notice how he's applying force down and the fridge is moving up. So he's changing the direction of, of the, the fridge itself, where, where it's moving. Which stickman A or B in the animation would have to push the lever with more force? And that's going to be B because he's getting a whole lot more distance out of it. He's applying, um, he's, he's trying to multiply his distance, not his, his force as a result. Why would you want to use something like a simple a lever uh, if a something like a lever if a simple machine? Why would you want to use a lever? I'm going to fix that later. Um, simple machines help you multiply your input force. You can, it requires less force to lift something. You can change the direction. You have to apply that force. Input and output. When we're thinking about input force, it's going to be called the effort. It's going to be what you do. So this person is actually pushing this fridge up this plank. This is the force in. This is the distance in. And then when, it, when, it, when we talk about output, this is going to be what the the machine does because of your work. So this is the real result of him using the simple machine is that he's lifting this fridge this distance off the ground. So he's lifting the weight of the fridge this distance uh, off the ground. And so what the machine is doing, that's really the end result. When you think of output, what are you getting out of using that machine? Input's what you're putting into it. So when, uh, when you use a simple machine, you're going to do work. You're going to apply a force in over a distance in. So you see this guy right here applying this force down over this distance in. And that's going to be your input. And the machine is going to do work as a result. The machine is going to lift the weight of this object. So lift the weight of this object. And, and the machine is going to lift the weight of this object to this distance right here. An ideal perfect situation all the work that this person's doing is going to go into the work that this machine's doing as a result. But we'll use the term ideal a lot. Um, we'll spend, we'll, we'll do math like it's ideal, but in reality, you're going to have heat lost. No machine's 100% efficient. So if we were looking at an ideal situation, what's going to happen is the work or the force distance in is going to be equal to the force distance out as a result. And so this is an equation that you want to kind of focus on that we'll be using a lot of. The output force is going to be equal to the weight of the object. If you didn't have the simple machine, you'd be lifting the weight of an object. You have like a goal. You might want to lift this object 0.5 meters, and you're lifting 100 kilogram or 1,000 newtons. If I multiply by 10 to make it a weight, um, 1,000 is a newton object, and I think that's what this question is asking you. What's the weight of a 100 kilogram fridge? What is the output that we're going to have to we're going to get out of the machine? That's going to be that 1,000 newtons of weight. How much work would you do to lift a 1,000 Newton fridge, 0.5 meters? So work is force times distance. So how much work would you do? What would we would have to put in? We'd have to apply 1,000 Newtons of force, and we're going to do that over the 0.5 meters, so 500 joules. How much work would a lever do by lifting the 1,000 well, Newton fridge, 0.5 Newtons up under ideal conditions? Well, it's going to be the same as this answer. 
So it'd be 500 joules as well, because in an ideal situation, the, the machine does exactly the work that you do. How much distance must you apply a 200 newton force to lift a 1,000 newton fridge 0.5 meters using this lever? So we have all the information going into this question, and we're asked for distance in. So right here, we can take that, multiply the distance in to get it isolated, plug in our values, 1,000 for the force output, the distance output 0.5. We're only applying 200 newtons force. So you're going to have to apply a distance. You're going to apply that force of 200 for much longer than this 0.5 because you're applying less force. And under the ideal conditions, that this, this equation tells you that you'd have to put, you'd have to apply that 200 newtons of force for 2.5 meters. So me mechanical advantage represents how many times you're multiplying your input force. For example, if you have an IMA of two, that means that you can lift a 100 newton box with 50 newtons, half half the input force, because you're multiplying the 50 that you put in by two, getting 100. Ideal mechanical advantage is um, this is so I, actual versus ideal mechanical advantage. Actual is talking about what's really happening from a machine, um, ignoring any sort of heat loss and anything else. What well, what really happens? You're pushing with this, you're getting this out of it. Ideal is based on geometry. If you're trying to take a look and, you know, what you should get, of course, you're going to friction different things. No machine's 100% efficient. Well, this, I'm going to apply a force to this distance. I'm going to get this height out of it so I can use that to calculate my mechanical advantage. Under perfect situations, once in ideal situations, you should be able to use geometry to figure out the actual mechanical advantage off a machine. But actual is what's really happening. So here's uh, the ideal mechanical advantage assumes 100% efficiency. It's a theoretical based on measurements. Um, and you can just take the distance in over distance out. And for the most part, IMA and AMA, you're going to have a number greater than, than one in most cases because you want to make a machine to make it easier for you to lift something. But if for some reason you want to make to get more distance out of it, you'd expect a number of less than less than one. But for most of the cases, um, in, in these problems, you can expect a number IMA and AMA should be set up in a way that you get a number above one, making it easier to, to use a, use an object, to use a um, simple machine. Okay, what's the ideal mechanical advantage of an incline that you apply a force of 65 newtons, um, 10 meters, and lift a 150 newton couch, 3 meters? Well, ideal mechanical advantage is going off of these distances. So we're going to be using the 3 meters and the 10 meters, and we can go ahead. And once again, like I said before, most, most machines are going to be making your job easier, so you could expect that the input force is what you're doing is going to be bigger than or the, 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 the input force, the input distance that you're applying a force over is going to be a longer distance because you're going to be applying less force. So we got the 10, we got the 3, and we get 3.33. So expect the top number, unless you're trying to get a greater distance out of it, to be, IMAs are going to usually be above 1 on a machine that's making your job easier to Actual mechanical advantage assumes machines are efficient, inefficient, and will lose energy such as heat. So this is just taking into account the actual force out versus the actual force in. Let's take a look at an example. So now we're looking at my actual force you apply. So this is my input. And I'm getting out, once again, the weight of the object is going to be the output force and setting it up in a way where I'm making it easier on myself so the number, the bigger number is going to be up top because I'm going to be having an easier time, a mechanical advantage of greater than 1. Plug in the 150, put, plug in the 65. So my job is 2.31 times easier than if I was just lifting this 150 or this 150 newton couch, yeah, toy couch, small couch for 150 newtons. Um, when you have a pulley system, you can quickly just assume the ideal mechanical advantage by taking a look at the strands going up from the object. So this one doesn't count because this is not actually um, sharing the, the force of, of, of lifting this object. These two are sharing the force of lifting this object. Once again, this one's not. If I switch the pulley system up, this one is is the, the weight. Just take a look at where the weight is. Follow the strands up. Any strand that goes up from it is going to be going included into the mechanical advantage. So notice how this one does not this one doesn't is not included in lifting and supporting that weight, whereas this one is because it's going upward. So this one would have a mechanical advantage of three. Okay, so taking a look at this one, what would the ideal mechanical advantage be? And if you look closely, you'll see two strands going up so that it'd have an IMA of two. 
Simple machine cannot create work or energy. No machine is 100% efficient. So let's take a look at um, some efficiency questions. Some heat's going to be lost. And in reality, if we were looking at a real situation where the problem said, you know, how much heat is lost, we we're going to have to include heat into this situation. So you're going to put work into the machine. You're going to get work out of the machine. Anything lost is going to be lost as that heat right there. So percent efficiency just means um, how much of the energy you're getting out of it in a percentage form, 100% being, being perfect, which is impossible, uh, unless it's an ideal situation, which is just kind of made up. But you can try to get a machine as close to that ideal as possible. So percent efficiency, you can solve it for the amount of work in versus how much work out. Um, you can also solve for based on what you theoretically should have versus what you actually have, multiplying by 100 to make it a, a, a percent. So what's the percent efficiency of a machine with an AMA of 2.31, like we saw before, and an IMA of 3.33? Plug in our values, and we get 69.37% efficient. Okay, a person does 100 joules of work with a machine in uh, the AMA of 2.31 and an IMA of 3.33. How much energy would be uh, would turn into work output? And so we can just take the form of how, much, how efficient is it times how much we're putting in, and that's how much we're getting out. So that's our answer right here, 693.7 joules. Person does 100 joules of work with the machine or the AMF, same thing. How much is lost is heat? Well, everything that's missing, everything from here to there that's missing right in between, that's going to be lost as heat. So we get 306.3 joules as our answer here. And then we get to the problem set. So if you haven't done the problems, make sure you do the problems and come back and just watch the video to just to check your answers and for support. So we get... 61 kilogram fridge multiplied by 10. Our output force is going to be the weight of the object, would be 610 newtons. That's what we would have to do without the machine, and what the machine would output if we are using it. The ideal length of the ramp when you have uh, it's to raise a 610 newton box, a height of 1.1 meters, using a force of 180. So we got your input output force. We just plug that in, and we get an answer of 3.73 meters. Ideal, once again, perfect situation. We're not losing anything as heat. Uh, which of client would require the most input force to raise a 15 kilogram mass? And it's going to be this last one because your your input distance is a whole lot less than any other one. The heights are the same, so your output distance is going to be the same, whereas this is the, the, the least input distance and therefore the most input force as a result of it. Which actual me mechanical advantage if Sam pushed a 610 newton box up an inclined plane with a force of 220 newtons? Uh, just plug in your values once again. Usually, uh, inclined plane is always going to make it easier on you. The bigger number is going to be up top, whether it's an IMA or AMA equ equation. Um, but yeah, just watch out because the force in, force out, the outs and ins change for the AMA and IMA. But the, the IMA is talking about distances, not, not forces. So you have 2.77 as your a actual mechanical advantage. What's the ideal mechanical advantage to push a 3.73 meter um, box up an incline plane, 1.1 meters? Well, we have 3.39. This is what we should be able to get out of something is 3.39 um, times the force that we have to put in. If you attempt to push a 3,500 Newton washing machine up a point or 5.0 meter ramp that stands 0.5 meters above the ground, what's the ideal mechanical advantage of the ramp? We plug in our values. We get 10 as our ideal mechanical advantage. Well, if you need to exert 450, what do you actually get out of it? What's your actual mechanical advantage? So we have our 3,500 Newton um, weights, 450 Newtons of force we have to apply in, so we get 7.78. And we can use that to figure out efficiency. We're getting 7.78 when we should ideally get 10. And so we get 77.8% efficient as our answer here. What would the ideal mechanical advantage of this pulley system be? Well, you can count the strands. One, two, three, four going up. So it would be IMA of four. This one doesn't count because this is not coming up from the object and not supporting the weight of the object. This is going to be the strand that you pull with. What would the IMA of this incline plane be? Well, we have a distance in, always going to be the top of the incline. This is what we're getting out of it. And so we get 3.1. What would an ideal situation, how much force would we actually have to apply? We plug in our numbers, and we get, when we're done with that, we get 161.29 newtons.